Uh, I'm joined by someone who always discusses things that actually matter and who saw where the Solomon Islands business was headed, to, headed far earlier than most from the spectator down under, the one and only Alexandra Marshall. Uh, Alexandra, you know, I, li I like to, uh, to beat up on the useless on government the useless in London government. as much as anyone else. But on this particular thing, um, I'm inclined to uh, think that Sydney deserves more of the blame. Ah, uh, well, Canberra, to be say. honest, there's not much... Canberra. <laughs> well, to be honest, there's not much that we could have done about it. Uh, once China decides that it's going to move into an area, it pretty much does it. Unfortunately for us, we've not just got problems with the Solomon Islands, we've got problems with our own ports. So we've got the port of Darwin under nine nine year lease to the Chinese as well. So the Solomon Islands will definitely be in a position to have a Chinese fleet there. They're going to bring in Chinese troops pretty much straight away to, they call it securing the region, but what they actually mean is quashing the domestic rebellions against the corrupt Chinese-led government in the Solomons, where they gave hundreds of thousands of dollars to various MPs in order to bring in Chinese businessmen and deny their fishing rights and farming rights of you know, ordinary Solomon Island people. So it's more about securing their power. That's why they've done it. And Australia probably could not have stopped it happening. But, you know, at the same time, we're not doing a great deal to secure the rest of the region. So it's you're right. It's partly our fault. Well, uh, they used to say that the Indian Ocean was a British lake and the Pacific Ocean was an American lake. China increasingly treats both of them as, chi it's got two Chinese lakes. Even the British were only content with one lake and the Americans, but China treats them both as Chinese lakes. Do you think it's actually a rational decision that when the governments of these, you know, very small states look at the world and they see Joe Biden giving a press conference and they see Boris Johnson talking about cake every day in the House of Commons, and they look at Scott Morrison, that they make a rational calculation that China is the future, and there's no point being sentimental about Morrison and Johnson and Joe Biden. What cited uh, calculation about the region that involves personal gain for themselves and short-term gain for their region, but in the long term, China doesn't play nice, it doesn't share resources, and it's not happy to allow individual powers to rise up and have their own autonomy. What China does is turn, like all communist nations, it turns all the surrounding neighbouring states into satellites of itself, which it then uses, it takes all of their resources, and it basically runs their governments as if they were part of Beijing. Now, that is not good for the future prosperity of any nation. It doesn't make them safe, it doesn't make them stable. And it basically robs the people of democracy in the long term. But look, the problem is it's the West fault this happened because they look at these islands, they look at Australia and America and they see a declining West and they think, oh, well, there's no security there for us against China. So if we want to solve the problem of Pacific islands clinging to a communist nation, then we have to join together and make ourselves look like a better prospect, renew what it means to have freedom and free trade and genuine cooperation in the region rather than subservience, which is what they're going to get under a China-led system. Now, a few weeks ago, there, there was at least one chap in the Australian press calling for Australia to dispatch forces to the Solomon Islands. I take it that's not going to happen now. Well, we've already got uh, forces in the Solomon Islands. We sent them there in November at the end of last year in order to help, you know, basically support Beijing's interests in uh, the Solomon Islands. Those will stay yeah. there. Uh, we've got uh, PNGs there as well and New Zealand. So we're not actually going to withdraw those troops, but we won't be sending any more. And I think as soon as the first Chinese batch of troops arrive, we'll probably find ourselves kicked out. Yeah, it's a it's a grim thing. What do you make of this AUKUS deal, uh, which sort of came out of the blue, uh, a, a new pact between Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States, AUKUS, uh, at the at the big uh, Zoom call to announce it. Joe Biden couldn't remember the name of your prime minister. He referred to him as that fella down under. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, um, that was Morrison's fault.
I mean, Morrison's got a lot of problems, yeah. but that one I think we can, we can blame that on uh, Biden. No, AUKUS was basically a necessity for Australia and for the UK and for America because we have squandered our years of peace down here. We've not built anything. We don't have any weapons. We wasted 90 billion odd on submarines, the French building them as if we could trust the French to build anything useful. So that was that was our bad. Uh, and so uh, America has gone, we need to arm and defend Australia because we represent the most important strategic asset in the Pacific as far as Western interests are concerned. And by Western interests, I mean people like Japan as well, who also rely on free trade through all those uh, maritime trade routes. So AUKUS was basically, we were told what to do. But basically, America said, you've got huge problems. You haven't done your job. We are going to help you fix this problem ASAP because obviously we couldn't do it on our own. And that's because we've got a parliament full of MPs who know nothing about geopolitics and did not correctly identify the threat of China decades ago. Yes, we're in an odd situation. You know, if you're uh, American, at least you can say, well, uh, Joe Biden uh, and the Democrats, and they've been in China's bag for years and all the rest of it. Uh, in the UK and, the, and Australia, we have supposedly conservative governments uh, who don't seem to do anything terribly conservative, including on national security. Well, we haven't just got a problem with conservative parties here. We've got the Greens, who are basically communists who want to open the door, cancel all foreign uh, debt that we've got, mm. demilitarize us. They want to decarbonize our military, which I'm not quite sure how that works. They love China. They don't <laughs> have any problem with China, you know, drowning the coral atolls in concrete and missiles. That's fine. But no. we're not allowed to have anything to defend ourselves. So you're right, we have a big problem with conservative parties, and that's why I've got minor parties coming up in Australia, because everyone is looking desperately for some common sense, and they cannot get it out of major parties. Well, let me just ask you uh, a follow-up on that business with the Greens, because the Greens have said, as I said, I think this is the... I think this is the, 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 the Queen, for good or bad, loves the Commonwealth, and she's made it what it is. And she's seeing it... Di sist systematically dismantled by the Chinese all over the globe. And I think it's worth talking about that. But the Greens say, no, no, no. If you, if you start talking about China and the Solomon Islands, it's just because you're a racist. Are you a, are you a racist for being interested in the Solomon Islands? So here's the thing. If we want to talk about collectivists and their relationship with racism, which is a strong and long history, then we'd be here all night. But the Greens don't mm. use racism that way. They use it as a cheap and petty tool to stop you asking questions and to stop you criticising mm. the genuinely terrifying regimes and crimes that are committed. So if you want to question China about, ooh, I don't know, COVID, maybe collapsing the global economy and killing you know, a lot of millions of people, mm. well, then no, you're racist if you do that. If you want mm. to talk about mm. protecting... Uh, the indigenous people in the Pacific from China, which is what we're actually talking about. It's the indigenous people of the Solomon Islands who are lost out and who are protesting. Mm. Well, you're racist if you want to protect them. This is what the Greens do when they have a collectivist mindset. And the Greens are interested in security. They are the old school international socialists. They have on their website and on their um, documentation, they want a global order and for us to be governed by yes. an international bureaucracy. So they don't mind if China rocks up. Yeah. No, and uh, it, uh, the, right now the betting is if there is a global order, it's more likely people when people say oh, we want a global order, they think it's going to look like Sweden or Denmark. Actually, the betting now is that it will look like China. And if the entire Australian Green Party were to be dropped in the churning Yangtze, which is a colour of river I have never seen anywhere else on the planet. I would be interested to uh, see how long all those greens actually survive in that putrid Yangtze uh, run by the regime they admire so much. Thank you very much, Alexandra. It's always great to see you. And you can check out Alexandra's late. She runs the uh, Australian end of the spectator and does a cracking job. So do check out that website.